FFA member with the top production agriculture SAE program each year is the highest recognition in our state for an aspiring young farmer. The award recognizes achievement in both career and leadership development. Let's meet the District Star Farmers. As your name is called, please move to the front of the stage to be recognized. Please recognize Colin Favreau, District 1, Mount Baker. Macy Ball, District 3, Toledo FFA. <laughs> Natalie Schroeder, District 4, Goldendale FFA. <laughs> Ava Buddy, District 5, Liberty FFA. Logan Cetera, District 8, Castle Rock FFA. Let's congratulate the four Washington Star Farmer finalists as they step forward to center stage. Let's meet our finalists. Please step forward and wave in district order. Your star finalists are Nora Tarbox, District 2, Yelm FFA. <laughs> Lillian McGregor, District 6, Lacrosse FFA. <laughs> Isabel Fadenrecht, District 7, Kashmir FFA. Colin Miller, District 9, Royal FFA. Now please turn your attention to the center screen as we learn more about the four finalists for Star Farmer. My SAE is breeding and showing um, purebred and Obahazi La Mancha dairy goats. I um, have been breeding them for about seven years. Uh, I was, I'm from California, I started out in California. And I lived in California until I was about eight, nine years old. And then I moved to Washington and um, my mom and dad decided to get two purebred Obahazi um, goats, like two kids. And um, yeah, I started from there. I really, I just really enjoyed the goats. I just took to them right away. It, it felt so natural. Even being a nine-year-old city kid, it felt felt so right. I milk at about eight o'clock in the morning, and eight o'clock at night, a 12-hour period. So basically, I start out by getting the goats up on the stand, and they have their grain. And um, during that time, there's a chemical reaction in their body called letdown, and then I will wipe them. And usually, I use a chlorhexidine solution um, to wipe them. It just gets all the bacteria off, and so there's no bacteria buildup in the infl milk inflations and it takes about two to three minutes to milk them up completely with the uh, milk machine I have. My parents have been a huge influence. They were the ones who really stuck with it and took me to the 4-H meetings and took me to AGA conventions to learn and take classes and a family friend, Mark Baden. He, um, he's an AGA judge and linear appraiser and director. And yeah, I from the beginning of my professional showmanship uh, journey. I, he's just always been there and I, I really couldn't have done it without him. After I graduate, I'd like to pursue, pursue general studies. Um, right now my plan is to become an ag teacher. Um, my ultimate goal is to have my own piece of property with my own breed of animals while still having this herd that I take care of with my family. My name is Nora Tarbox. I'm from the Yelma FFA and I'm the District 2 Star Farmer. I 
I started off and I got my first goats uh, for my birthday when I turned about eight. Um, I got two small dairy goats and from there I just kind of showed them for a couple years and then I decided that I just wanted to do a little bit more so I got into the more market side of that and that's really where my SAE project began. For me, I bought a couple of does off of a gal that I knew and continued to buy some weathers from her and then I diversified my herd a little bit for with um, some breeding stock does from just around the area and throughout the years I've just managed to breed my own herd and be able to raise market weathers and does to sell to people in our area. I've had so much help throughout the years with my SAE. I know when I first started, my parents were heavily involved in it. As I said, they helped purchase my very first two little dairy goats that I had. And from there, I've just kind of sought help and been able to get it from many people wherever I've asked. Uh, there's Abby DeMuller, who I've showed together with her daughter, and she's helped me learn many valuable skills over the years that we've shown together. And also, in the pa just in the past several years, uh, Danielle Jelnick from up in Tri-Cities has helped me diversify my breeding program a lot and learned a lot of different things that have helped me excel in my SAE. I normally decide to put my does in with whichever buck I'm choosing to breed certain ones to as I have two different bucks um, about a year before the show. So we generally put them in around the same time as the last show is. And I think that the whole process of just being able to breed your own animal does certainly give you much more appreciation for what it actually is. I have to make the decisions of what does I think and what genetics pair best with which buck that I have. And then I have to make the decision of which kids I want to keep and which ones I want to sell or just send to the sale yard. And there's a lot of decision making that goes into it and you see a lot of hard work. I mean, you have to give vaccines, you're banding, you're dehorning for all the weathers and it's a lot more work and dedication. But I think at the end, being able to see it all pay off is certainly just, it's a much more gratifying feeling than just buying a weather a couple months before the fair, at least for me. I have been accepted to uh, Syracuse University on a computer engineering scholarship. And although that's not necessarily a field that many people immediately think of as connected to ag, I really hope to be able to stay in and near this industry that's very near and dear to my heart and has helped raise me and shape a lot of the things about my personality. And I plan to use my degree to help in whatever way I possibly can, the people that still are in the agricultural industry. And I do still hope in the future to have a small herd of goats to show to local, to sell to local kids. I'm Lily McGregor, I'm from the Lacrosse FFA chapter, and I am the District 6 Star Farmer. My project is I raise club lambs uh, to show and sell at fairs and expos they're of a higher quality but also I raise registered South Downs which are becoming very popular among people nowadays. So the, the difference between the club lambs and the general uh, type of lamb is the they're more of a refined version they're more uniform they look more filled out i focus on making my sheep my south down specifically look like a normal black face lamb that you would find at a market class but it's evolving the breed much like people evolve dog breeds to be their perfect little dog i'm evolving sheep to be the perfect little sheep when I'm raising them for just me to show, it's okay to have a lower success rate on high quality lambs, but when you're raising them to sell to other people, you need to have high quality lambs each time so that you can sell more lambs. Well, I've always been in the sheep industry. My parents had sheep before I was born, so I was raised around the sheep, but specifically I got into the South Downs my eighth grade year, around age 14. We bought my first sheep, Marianne, at a sale and I just fell in love with the breed. They're very interesting, they have great personalities and it's fun to learn about each individual animal. I've sold lambs to the Kashmir FFA chapter, to the uh, Wenatchee FFA chapter and some into the Monroe FFA chapter. And even just recently to a show I just went to, an FFA member had a reserve 
Grand Champion Market Lamb that I sold him. I was really happy when he placed high with the lamb because that's showing that the lambs that I raise are competing very well against high quality club lambs. I'm Isabel Faddenright, I'm from the Cashmere FFA and I'm the District 7 Star Farmer. probably three years, four years ago now, my brother and I decided that we wanted to do a little bit of farming on our own. And so my dad got us set up with 23 acres of ground just around here and whatnot. And so uh, we raise seed corn and seed beans and we do it together. And then last year, two years ago, excuse me, when my brother graduated, I took it over on my own. Yeah, and then on top of that, I worked for my dad here on his hay farm and whatnot. And then he runs a trucking business, so we're loading a lot of hay and sending trucks to the coast. So we'll get a hold of the seed, co seed contractors, whether it's Monsanto or Columbia Bean or Frontier Seed. They'll say, you know, we got 10 acres of this variety and they'll bring it out to us. And then all we have to do is plant and then grow it and they take care of everything else. So it's pretty simple, it's not, a huge startup cost and for something like your first project it's pretty simple um, you know you just have to pay attention be good about watering and there's a lot of help around here with people willing to get you going so that was kind of why we started with that i also worked for huntsinger farms doing some cow calf operation stuff so we're calving out we're just about done right now and then doctoring and branding and whatnot and then i will also stack hay in the summer around here, run a custom stacking business. My interests lie a lot in cattle, in the beef industry. Um, it's a tough business to be in, obviously, but it really, I enjoy doing it. Um, I take a lot of pride in the, the work that we do, so I'd like to get into that. Um, I wouldn't, I'm not sure how it's gonna work, but that's my ultimate goal would to be to get into the beef industry. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do. I'll either get a degree in agribusiness. Um, I'm really leaning towards the ranch management program. So I'll stay here for the summer and I'll work until September. And then I'm going to go to Treasure Valley Community College in Ontario, Oregon. I'm Colin Miller. I'm from the Royal FFA chapter and I'm your District 9 star farmer. Your Washington FFA star farmer is Isabel Fadenreich, District 7, Cashmere.